Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom Presents Carnage Week. And this is our third episode of Carnage Week, but I think it's episode 68 or so of the show. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to take a break from the comics. We already talked about the origin of Carnage in the comics um, and Savage Genesis. And then we also talked about Maximum Carnage in the last episode. So this episode is actually going to focus on the 90s animated cartoon. So we did an episode like this a while ago for the uh, for the 90s animated Spider-Man cartoon featuring Venom, like the three-part storyline. And we already talked about that in a previous episode. So if you want that information and that setup for what we're about to talk about here, I'll put a link down below in the description box so you can go back and watch that episode. If you haven't seen it, watch that before watching this one because in this one we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last one. Uh, so basically uh, like a season or so later after we left... Um, I think it was two seasons, I think. Uh, season one featured Venom towards the end of the season, and then season two kind of, you know, didn't do any symbiote stuff. Uh, it had a lot of stories in it based off of various comic book issues like Mutant Agenda and the X-Men meeting Spider-Man and things like that. Uh, but in this season, they decided to do a season-long long arc called Sins of the Father, and it was basically going to be about Norman Osborn and this, like, whole thread going on, but it was going to also introduce characters that haven't been brought into the Spider-Man animated universe, like Punisher and Daredevil and, and those those kind of characters so it was pretty cool and we also got Morbius uh, the previous season so they set up a lot of stuff they started branching out and pulling the greater Marvel Universe in through Spider-Man which was really awesome and I think one of the things that made that show really amazing and very memorable because a lot of people were introduced to characters for the first time if, you know most kids kind of knew in the 90s who Spider-Man was most kids know any decade uh, who Spider-Man was any any time past the 60s uh, they know oh yeah Spider-Man okay cool uh, but they might not know every character, and they might not know the Marvel Universe as a whole. So that's where the Spider-Man cartoon was really great. It introduced a lot of the Marvel Universe. And in this two-episode uh, part uh, storyline is no exception. Uh, this was called Venom Returns, was part one, and part two was called Carnage. And so uh, what happened is we start off almost like in the comic books. It's Eddie Brock in prison, and he's uh, you know dealing with what he's done as Venom. And the symbiote has been launched in outer space by Spider-Man at the end of the, the three-part storyline. Uh, the soup was ripped off, put on the shuttle, and launched into space. Uh, so now Eddie Brock is without the symbiote, and he's at the uh, Ravencroft Psychiatric Ward, and he's getting help uh, help by Dr. Ashley Kafka. And Dr. A Dr. Ashley Kafka is actually from the comic books, and she's, um, she's you know, kind of runs Ravencroft, um, but she also has, like, you know, other roles. I think she worked her way up there. She was, like, a psychiatrist and then became, like, head psychiatrist. And she's trying to help the, the most criminally insane that are there, the people that just seem helpless. And she's actually making progress with Eddie Brock, but his his roommate, his cellmate, um, Cletus Cassidy, she's made zero progress with. And they don't really go into full detail of Cletus Cassidy about him being like a serial killer or anything that intense, although they do start the story off with him, you know, as Cletus and the cops are like outside and they're, you know, they're like, we're, you know, we got to break in, you know, break in and get him before he kills, you know, innocent people. And then uh, the police break in and then he grabs one of the cops and he's like, I'm going to kill her, man. I'm going to kill her. And Spider-Man stops him. Uh, and that's how he gets arrested and brought to Ravencroft. So uh, we get a little setup for Cletus there. We know he's not a good guy and we know instantly he gets on Eddie Brock's nerves and Eddie gets on his because Eddie's actually softening up. Um, in the cartoon, they totally are trying to redeem uh, Eddie Brock. They have not gone to the levels that the comic book has where he's killed innocent people. Obviously, it's a cartoon, so he was just a misunderstood bad guy in the in the cartoon version. And uh, and Cletus, though, is not misunderstood. He's a full-on bad guy. So they're arguing in their cells. Uh, meanwhile, Dormammu, and yes, I'm going to go really fast here because there's going to be a lot of characters we're going to throw at you guys, uh, but Dormammu from Doctor Strange, if you remember the big head at the end of the Doctor Strange movie, uh, he appears and he tells Baron Mordo, uh, who is Doctor Strange's friend, who, you know, they part ways at the end of the movie because his friend's like, no, you're twisting magic and you're breaking the rules and I don't want to be any part of this. And Baron Mordo goes off. Um, so in the ca cartoon, in this version, he's working for Dormammu and he's serving him and he's like his servant on Earth. Uh, and he's trying to find a way to bring Dormammu into this dimension. And they think they have a way. Because Tony Stark and Stark Enterprises have come up with this new trans-dimensional, uh, you know, beam that they're going to try to use for for good in our world. Uh, but Baron Mordo has, you know, learned that they can tweak this machine and use it to bring Dormammu from the other dimension. And so they want to go get this machine. But Baron Mordo is not, you know, he's not going to be able to stand up against Iron Man and War Machine uh, or any other superheroes that may show up. 
But under the orders of Dormammu, uh, Baron Mordo casts a spell that turns the satellite in space with the symbiotes on. Uh, he, it brings, he brings the remains of the shuttle back to Earth. Uh, so he casts a spell to, you know, reach time and space, go out into outer space, and, uh, and cause a piece of the ship that was, like, broken off and wandering through space, uh, found a way to, to kind of bring it back to Earth. And uh, I'm just sitting there going, wow, if he has that kind of power, why does he need a machine to bring Dormammu? That seems like a lot of power. Uh, but it was, according to him, it was just a simple spell. So they're bringing the symbiote back. But what they uh, he didn't know, but Dormammu did, is that while the suit was lost in space, it reproduced and it created carnage. So when it crash lands back down on Earth and it finds these two, like this couple making out in the woods, uh, you know, the, the red symbiote goes on one of them and the uh, black symbiote goes on another. And those two go into Ravencroft and give the suits over to Eddie Brock and Cletus Cassidy. And basically, uh, you know, Baron Mordo says, look, you're gonna serve Dormammu, my master, so I'll give you your suit back, because Eddie's like Jones, and he's like, I, I, I wanna do good, but I need the suit back, and the suit gave me power, and I could probably do some good with it now. And uh, he's fallen in love with Ashley Kafka, his doctor, uh, and so, you know, he's, he's so torn. So, uh, so Baron Mordo's like, look, I, you can't be torn. You need to focus and you need to do this. So we'll give you the suit back, but you got to do what I say. And Cletus Cassidy's like, no, man, give me a suit too. Like he won't do it. He's soft now. Like I'll do it. I'll, I'll take out, I'll take out the, your orders and, and I'll, I'll deliver whatever you need. So Eddie Brock's like, I got this punk. And he goes off and he, uh, tries to retrieve this machine. Uh, but when he gets there, he, you know, during a Stark presentation, uh, where Tony Stark's on a uh, you know screen and J. Jonah Jameson and Peter and everyone are in the audience to like watch and you know see what this thing can do, uh, Venom shows up and he tries to take it, uh, take the machine away and so Spider-Man intervenes and so does War Machine and we have James Rhodes, uh, War Machine step up and he's got his armor on, he's got his weapons and he's just beating the crap out of Venom, so uh, that's when Dormammu is like, look, you know Venom is probably going to lose his fight, so we need to give that other suit to someone, and Baron Mordo's like, well I know someone who volunteered. So uh, they pick Cletus Cassidy and they give him the Carnage suit, and then Cletus becomes Carnage, uh, and uh, and he, like in the comic book, says I instead of we, even though the the origins are a little different because the reason he bonded so well with the the suit in the first place was because it went into his bloodstream. Uh, that is not the case here in the animated show. Uh, in this version, he just got bonded with it like Eddie Brock got bonded with his suit. It was just handed over to him by Dormammu, um, uh, you know, through a host, like a random person in the woods uh, brought, you know, walked into Ravencroft and just gave him the suit. Uh, so uh, so now Carnage has been born and he goes and, t you know, helps Venom. They get the machine and they get away. And, uh, and you know, basically War Machine, he got his but kicked when the two symbiotes showed up, and so did Spider-Man. So the two of them kind of regroup, and uh, War Machine says, "Look, I'm I my suit's down, and it's gonna take a while to repair it. So I'm gonna help. Uh, I'm gonna send in the, the cavalry. Uh, Iron Man's gonna come and help you." And so the second episode, which is called Carnage, is pretty much Iron Man and Spider-Man teaming up to face Venom and Carnage. Uh, but once Venom gets the machine back to Dormammu, he's like, "Look, our our deal is done. Like I'm gonna go now and and try to do some good, and you know." try to reconnect with Ashley Kafka, uh, the person I've been falling in love with. So he bails and Carnage is like, well, what do you need me to do? I'll, I'll help you. Like the machine isn't enough. What else do you need? And Baron Mordo says, I'll imbue you with a new power. So anyone you kill, you'll absorb their soul. And we need like 50 souls to put in this chalice and linking that with the machine will bring Dormammu here. So we need to make sacrifices to bring him. And Dor you know, and Carnage is like, yeah, dude, you're gonna bring this big giant flaming head demon over here? I'm into that, rock and roll. So he goes out and he just starts you know, slaying people. But because it's a cartoon, they basically just have him shoot his symbiote into them. And you see their life, you know, you see like a, a white light come off them. And then they just fall to the ground, like asleep, basically. Uh, and they're all kind of in comas. Uh, and so Carnage is filling up this chalice and Iron Man and Spider-Man are trying to fight him. And once again, he gets away. He has the chalice. He goes back to Dormammu's lair and Baron Mordo's lair. And he's ready to hand over the souls. And they start to come out. And you know, Dormammu is entering our dimension. But then uh, they're able to convince Venom to help them in the last minutes uh, as you know because they're like hey look actually Kafka when this Dormammu comes in 
he's going to kill her, he's going to kill everybody, and uh, and a lot of innocent people are going to die. And Venom's like, fine, I'll come help you guys. So uh, even though I hate Spider-Man, I'm still going to do this. So the three of them team up, they fight Carnage, they fight Baron Mordo, and they battle Dormammu. And just when you think Spider-Man's going to make the winning play and save the day, but he can't because he's too weak, uh, Carnage kidnaps Ashley, and he's like, you know, don't, you know, don't mess with me, Venom, or I'll hurt her. Let Dormammu come into this world. And Venom's like, uh, you know, it's it's up to me. Iron Man's down, Spider-Man's down. It's up to me to save the day. So he jumps in, tackles Carnage, and then they ram into Dormammu and go back into the dimension Dormammu came from. And as they're falling, Venom turns around and he sees Ashley and this symbiote, you know, comes off of him and he like reaches out to her and he's like, I love you, you know, and then the portal shuts, Spider-Man smashes the machine, or actually I think Iron Man smashes the machine uh, and, uh, and Spider-Man's like, wait, we could have got Eddie back and, and Iron Man's like, look, he he made the play. He he sacrificed himself for us. So we gotta you go. We gotta respect that. Um, and then he's like, yeah, but you also destroyed Tony Stark's machine. And you know, he, obviously Peter doesn't know Iron Man is Tony Stark. So Iron Man's like, uh, if Tony Stark wants to bill me, he can bill me. <laughs> he's like, I just did that to save you know the world. Uh, and then Baron Mordo actually gets away to hopefully redo this plan another day. Uh, but I don't think he ever gets the chance to. Uh, pretty much this is where it ends for the Carnage and Venom stuff until the end of the final season. Uh, Carnage does come back in an interesting way, but we'll talk about that another time because I want to talk about the comic book version of it first before we get to the animated series version. But this, you know, these two-part episode was really cool. It was uh, it was great to see Venom back again and then them really make him, uh, you know, a hero in this and 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 not uh, not like someone who's you don't want to root for at first. Like you kind of are like, all right, he was a bad guy and he kind of tormented Peter a little bit, but nowhere near the level he does in the comic books. Obviously it's a cartoon, so they want to keep it, you know, rated, you know, G pretty much. Uh, but it was great. It's still a fantastic two-part episode. Uh, it's in the Sins of the Father season, which is season three. And like I said, the episodes are called Venom Returns and Carnage is part two of it. And it was great. I, I thought it was a cool take on Carnage, especially for an animated series version. They couldn't make him too bloodthirsty, but I thought it was still effective. And that was great for me. I remember as a kid seeing those episodes and being like, wow, War Machine, who when I got into comics, I didn't read a lot of Iron Man, but the few Iron Man issues that were out when I was a kid and first got into comics in the 80s and stuff, um, they were when Rhodes, Jim Rhodes, uh, War Machine, was at, you know, he was Iron Man in the comics. He was War Machine, but he was Iron Man because uh, Tony Stark was injured and he wasn't, you know, wearing the suit for a while. So, it was cool for me because I was like, hey, awesome. I know who War Machine is. This is great. And then I remember when Iron Man showed up, I was like, oh, it's Iron Man. <laughs> but like nowadays, I feel like if a kid watched it, you know, the, those episodes, they'd be like, hey, Iron Man's here. That, that's super cool. Uh, but for me, it was like I got excited for War Machine because I knew who that was. And I was like, yeah, I like War Machine. He's awesome. Uh, but this episode and these two episodes are great. You can check them out. I think you can buy them on Amazon or Xbox or anything like that. You can find them. And, uh, and download them. I think they're like a dollar an episode or two dollars an episode, um, depending if you get high def or standard def. But uh, they're fantastic. And if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend it. Watch Spider-Man, the 90s animated series. It's phenomenal. So as always, I want to know what you guys think. Have you seen these episodes? What do you think of these episodes? Let me know down in the comments below. I love your feedback, and I'll definitely get back to you if you have any questions. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Carnage Week will continue tomorrow, so I'll see you then. Peace.